Hello and welcome to Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Sean Burke. Joining me is Andy Taylor, Henry Lewin Tiss, and a very special guest. He's a former Man United and Middlesbrough defender, a multiple Premier League and FA Cup winner, and not to mention a PFA Players Player of the Year, Gary Pallister. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Coming up on this week's show. I can't believe he was my roomie. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric, yeah, I mean, he, he he had a few misdemeanors, didn't he, in his time? Uh, <laughs> there's one, yeah, there's one that stands out definitely. You don't want to think about that, to be quite honest with you. you know, um, <laughs> turn to Eric and went, Eric, you can't go around doing that, son. <laughs> 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 Well, you've picked the right time to come on our show, Gary, as Man United are currently top of the table for the first time since 2017. A lot has changed since then. Lukaku was up front, Mkhitaryan was in midfield, and the only refs making incorrect calls to a TV screen were us punters on the couch. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go to you first, Gary. Just what has clicked for Man United this season to get them back on top? I wish I knew. I mean... What, seven weeks ago was it we played Arsenal at Old Trafford and uh, we got completely outplayed. Uh, they won the game 3-1 and then didn't win a game for the next six, seven weeks. So you're looking at that and you're thinking, well, you know, home form's all over the place. It was only the, the away form that was, was keeping us any kind of level of sanity for a Man United fan. But we've had, I don't know, it's, we've had false dawns before, I guess. When Ollie first came in, we, we went on that incredible run. When we came out the first lockdown, we looked a, we looked a really good side. We, we qualified back uh, for the Champions League. Then we start the season and we, we slip into old habits. We got a bit sloppy again. We were conceding goals. We couldn't find a win at home. I mean, we've got good players. It was just finding that way to click. And um, obviously, Fernandez was a big part of that. He's been a huge player, huge influence in that team. Yeah, you mentioned Bruno Fernandes there and how incredible he's been. Uh, he's been a revelation since he arrived. But yeah. do you think he's been so good that the team would actually struggle if he was out with a long-term injury, perhaps? You don't want to think about that, to be <laughs> quite honest with you. you know, um, <laughs> listen, he's been pivotal. He, he has been pivotal. And um, there's no getting away from that. Right from the get-go, coming into the side, he's, you know what I mean? He's, he's been a, a, a different class. Without him... Yeah, I, 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 you'd have to say because of the impact, it would be a bit of a struggle. But other people are getting confident. Um, you know, Cavani's come in. Apparently, he's very good around the dressing room with his experience. I, I'm always more impressed by his, as you said, his work rate and the fact he he makes other players work harder, keeps them honest. You know, he's if someone gives the ball away, yeah. you know, he's 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 the first one telling them to track back, but he does so much of the hard grind and the dirty work. It's really impressive. I've said this many times before about Bruno Fernandes and the, the current Manchester United. I was very fortunate and I played in, in teams that had a lot of leaders, a lot of people with opinions, Roy King, Paul Ince, Brian Robson, Steve Bruce, Peter Schmeichel. These were guys who would give you a flea in the ear if things weren't going right on the pitch. You know, it, it, it kind of almost self-managed itself really on the pitch at times. And that's something, you know, that, maybe United have been lacking uh, is that strong personality that somebody on the pitch doesn't mind digging people out and, and asking for more from them and you know that's something that right from the I, I watched his debut at Old Trafford and um, you, you saw that straight away if he wasn't getting the ball when he wanted it he was giving him a flea in the air he was, he was demanding that ball Have you noticed uh, a broader effect that Ollie's had on the club is it? Is it just the squad he's gotten his hands on, or do you notice a kind of broader shift in attitude around the place when you're in there? Um, to be quite honest, I've only met Ollie uh, once since he's um, since he's taken the job. There's a lot of people at the club that were there when he was there beforehand. He's always got on well with people behind the scenes, which hasn't always maybe been the case. Um, and he's a very likable character. Um, so, I, you know, I think things, I kind of think things are more relaxed behind the scenes in, in that respect. But yeah, it's it's still about what, what what happens on the pitch and Ollie knows that and Ollie's aware of that. And, and uh, you know, he's he's working as hard as he can to, to, to get things right. And as we speak, um, there could be more so. We're, we're top of the league. 
we've, you know, we've got to deal with the disappointment of being out of the Champions League. But uh, it's certainly progress. Um, you know, as I said, two months ago, you wouldn't have thought we'd be here. You played with Ollie and I suppose know him quite well. I'm sure you've been asked it before, but did you see traits in Ollie as just a person that you could see him becoming a manager? Or was that never something you could um, see? Or do you not even look at that sort of thing, I suppose, as a player? No, I think it, you sort of did look at, at the things as as a player and I think, well, yeah, you, you know, Robbo would probably go on to be a manager. Um, Brucey would probably go on to be a manager. Um, people like Sparky, you never expected him to be a manager. <laughs> Um, so at the last one at the training ground and first one to leave so he was <laughs> back down as being a manager um, but Ollie, Ollie, I think you probably it was, he, he, was, he, was a, he was a thinker about the game would you have maybe you, I would have looked at Ollie and thought yeah you, you go, you'll go into coaching um, managing is I think a little bit different I think you've got to have a you know I think you've got to have a bit of a nasty side about you um, and have that little bit of fear factor um, you wouldn't have thought that about Ollie. Mike when Ratton and Raven. Um, he's worked with the best at that in, a, in <laughs> Alex, and uh, he might have picked up traits from that. I mentioned in the intro uh, what kind of stellar career you've had in your time in the Premier League, and we couldn't pass up the chance to talk about that a little bit. Uh, you just mentioned Sir Alex Ferguson, um, but as someone who played under him, do you think? he would have difficulty managing the modern footballer in this environment of social media and inflated egos that we were talking about. No, he would adapt. Yeah. He, adapt. he adapted it many times, um, you know, with the likes of agents, um, with the social media, with the, um, you know, the squad rotation. Um, everything that was kind of thrown at him, he, he kind of dealt with. So I would have I would have no fears. The, the control thing is is something I think you often talked about. Whether you, you've got as much control, um, a lot of the managers now with the clubs, I, I'm not so sure whether that's as I say whether that's feasible in in, in this day and age. I don't know, but yeah, he, he could. He, you know, he'd find a way. He would adapt and he would he would he would move on. Obviously, Sir Alex was good in pretty much every way. But is there a particular trait where you? think that's why he was the best when you look back that maybe you didn't ever see from anyone else well I, I always talk about the story when I'd had a big ding dong with him I literally thought I was going to be put on the transfer list and and uh, we were more or less at each other's throat at, at half time in a game I'd been there about a year and a half we managed to win the game we had a, a day off afterwards I think it was and I went home back to Teesside and I had breakfast with my mum and dad the next day. I said, I think I'm going to be on the transfer list. I just had an almighty ding dong with a gaffer. And uh, things were said, and I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be put on the list today when I get back. Go up and see the gaffer in his office. And uh, anyway, booed in there and sat down with him. I was expecting him to, I was, I was still fuming. I was still ready to have a ding dong. He, he sort of sat me down and said, right, we need to talk about what happened the other night. And, and he said, I'm sorry, I, I overstepped the mark. And wow, <laughs> just <laughs> boom, it just flattened me completely. I just, you know, I was gobsmacked. And, and I think that was a mark of the man. He, you know what I mean? He knew he'd said things at half time. And, um, you know, he, he had overstepped the mark and I'd reacted. And, you know, uh, he did qualify by sort of saying, we can't have that happening at half time uh, when I've only got 10 minutes to talk to the players. Uh, he put his hand out, we shook hands, and it was dealt with there and then. And that was something he always taught him. He didn't want, he didn't want things to fester. It still didn't stop me from getting the air dryer again. Um, but on that, on that one occasion, you know, he was, you know, I mean, he, he was man enough to, to, to say that he, he'd overstepped the mark and, and pushed the wrong button at that time. Um, and that, and that, that for me, you know, I, I, I played it under managers that wouldn't speak to you for, for a month after something like that, you know. But it was dealt with there and then. Um, I even forgot to apologise for my part. It was quite honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> but that, I, I think that that was the that was the, the sort of pivotal moment for me. Is as much as he's he's seen as this kind of um, hard nosed Scotsman who you know what I mean with the hair dryer and you know he's got no compassion. He's got you know what I mean the, the guy has got a different side to him, and I think that's what stood him in great stead and helped him um, become the fantastic manager that he that he was. Uh, we talked about um, 
players on social media. And one, one thing that I'll, I always kind of wonder about is what Eric Cantona would have been like in his playing days if he had access to social media. I mean, even nowadays, he's pretty, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're talking uh, about the, the seagulls and the crawlers. <laughs> what, was, what was he like to play with? Did you see that kind of spark of madness in the dressing room? I knew he was a bit different. Yeah. Eric, and he talked about art and poetry and the beautiful game and painting pictures on easels and, and things like that. But Eric was great. Eric was, was, was true. He is, as I say, he was a little bit different, but I think he warmed to us and we warmed to him straight away. We weren't too sure when we, when we signed him. We, we, we kind of a bit of head scratching, but he walked into that dressing room with his chest out and his collar up and, and uh, it was just as if he owned the place. And you don't mind that arrogance, confidence, whatever you want to call it. Eric had that a, a real self belief that he was the best, and um, you know it didn't take him long before he started proving that in a, in a, in a United shirt. Was Eric a sort of player that you'd let him get away with a little bit more on and off he the pitch? Got away with a lot, yeah. Because I yeah. never saw Eric get the hair. <laughs> right, okay. Never saw Eric get the hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Robson get half a hair dryer once, but Eric, yeah. I mean, he 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 had a few misdemeanors, didn't he, in his time? And, uh, <laughs> there's one, yeah, there's one that stands out definitely. Pick your fights, you pick your your moments. You understand, and I think that's another great trait of the gap and understanding the the characters and the personalities of players. I don't think Eric would have ever sort of taken that on board. Um, that sort of dressing down in a, in a listen. Eric took a lot of stick. I mean, everybody talks about that the Crystal Palace game and when he went into the crowd and all that. I think that had been coming over a period of weeks. Um, Eric was to, I mean, he had to be privy to some of the stuff he would take, the abuse when he got off buses, or you could hear people from the sidelines, or you know, he had players winding him up. Uh, and I just think that was a build up and eventually he, he just exploded. And in rather spectacular fashion, he isn't the word. Oh, I must have said something. I mean, I, I, this story's been told many times. I think when I think we all expected the the uh, the hairdryer and Eric to get a a real sound telling off, and um, we all came back in the dressing room and uh, the gap had a had a, a few pops at a few plays. We managed to draw the game one all with ten men, mm. and he still wasn't happy. <laughs> and um, you know, we we were all like, well, it doesn't matter because Eric's going to get it now. <laughs> Eric get the air dryer, and um, you know when he came, to, Eric was sat with his suit and boot in the corner, and he after he had to go at the lads, he sort of turned to Eric and he went, "Eric, you can't go around doing that, son." This <laughs> 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 it, it was uh, it was air dryer, so um, yeah. I mean, listen, as a, as a team, we loved what he brought. Gary, can I can I ask you about the the class of '92? Because obviously you would have been established in the team at that point. We were you aware of them before they kind of broke on the scene. I mean, what were your kind of recollection of them kind of bursting through? My first recollection was really of um, of Eric Harrison, who was the coach. Just I, cause I used to go up and have breakfast in the uh, the coach's room uh, before training. I'd get in a little bit early, have a bre- breakfast at the ground, and and sort of sit and have a crack. With um, there'd be Eric Harrison up there, Brian Kidd, Nobby Styles was was still at the club then. God rest his soul. It was then I think Eric said, "Oh, by the way, there's some players going to be taking your place in the team. He'd like <laughs> winding you up, you know." And he'd talk about Scores and Beckham and Butt and Neville. Uh, obviously, Giggsy was 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 a, a couple of years before then. But yeah, yeah, you, you became you became aware of them because the coaches were telling you this this was the next generation and they were going to be. They were going to be forcing their way into the team, so you, you, you took note of it. Um, uh, I'd love to be able to say, oh, I, you know, they, they stood out for me, saying, all oh, right, that, that he's going to be Paul yeah. Scott, going to be a world class midfield player, or yeah, um, you know, or Beckham's going to go on to be, I, I, you know, there's still a lot of growing up to do from that from that level to to break mm-hmm. into the first time for the first team and then establishing yourself. So, so yeah, they, they were all a little bit different, but they had that. That camaraderie thing, you know, that they were all looking after each other's backs, and you know, they came through the FA Youth Cup success, and um, you know, they went on to to have fantastic careers. Then, do you do you think in this current United team, obviously, we've got quite a few young players who have kind of really established themselves. You've got obviously Marcus, who's been in the team for a while now. 
um, Mason, Scott McTominay, uh, Axel, Tuanzebe, and Dean Henderson. Do you think that they can kind of going forward have a similar impact on the club that 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 crop of players did? You're never going to get something like that crop. That crop of players came through, and four of them came through in the same in the same year. Very much doubt you'll get that kind of thing. I think that was a once in a lifetime uh, event. Yeah, I think it's something that Ollie will want to embrace. He knows what it's like to, you know, about giving kids a chance. I mean, he, I mean, Ollie coming as a as a young man, we thought he was like a, a, an academy player or something. He was that young looking. It'll be bought here. He only took one training session before we thought, wow, this, this kid's different. I mean, you hit the target so many times and train, score that many goals, you, you made you sit up and take notice. But yeah, I think it's good that, you know, he's, he's not afraid to give kids a chance. Mason Green was obviously, I think, the one that's uh, really standing out at the moment. Uh, his goal scoring is phenomenal. Tackling's almost outlawed. It's like the, the, the one with, with Luke Shaw, isn't it? Back in back in our day, that'd be seen as a great tackle. Yeah. You've, you've kind of hit over the top of the ball. You've left a bit on the player. You've probably hurt him. And that would be probably seen as a, an absolutely fantastic a fantastic tackle. Nowadays, it's seen as as dangerous play. And I guess I guess they're right. It, you know, I think Luke, on another day, could have been sent off. You think back to Adams, Ball, Keown, um, Brucey. Um, these guys would hit and, and smash a few people in the early part of the game. You're always allowed the first tackle. That was kind of the consensus back then. You know, if you went and smashed somebody, right, don't do that again. Mm. You might get booked next time. Nowadays, you don't You don't get the, the, the one free tackle or one free hit. Yeah, it, it's, it's all deemed right from the beginning. And rightly so. You know, you've got to protect um, players. But yeah, VAR... I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, it's it's sitting around there last night for what three, four minutes before a decision is made. Yeah, um, that that doesn't feel natural to me. I don't know what who, who's who's actually in there. I think you need guys who played at the at the top level in these in these vast studios to to look at certain things. Speaking of the Burnley game, what did you think of Harry Maguire's disallowed goal? If I'd have scored it, I'd have been I'd have, I'd have been. Disappointed. He has put his arm out. If somebody's backing into you, you kind of do that anyway. You kind of put your arms out. It's interpretation again, isn't it, from from the referee. He's seen the arm come out. Has it made that much difference to the defender? I don't know. I think he's still going to win the ball. You know, I mean, I was all for that. I've got to say, I, I thought it was, you know, I was always saying when we played that, you know, we needed goal line technology. It was there to, to use, but we didn't use it. I mean, that's crazy. Why? Why we never used that? Even back in my team, I don't. Uh, my my time, I don't know. It's it's still got its its gremlins, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Whether we can make it any better, I'm I'm not so sure. But yeah, I, I don't like the fact that you're sitting around for you know that length of time waiting for decisions to be made. I think it's finally time to put our guest to the test, as Betway has set a four to score football challenge for our guest Gary. In front of me here, I have the names of all of your Man United teammates from the 1993-1994 season when you won a Premier League and FA Cup double. Okay, so I need you to name as many of your teammates from that squad as possible in 90 seconds. Time starts now. Michael, Seeley, Parker, Pallister, Bruce, Irwin, Ince, Robson, Blackmore, Hughes, Cantona, Shah, Giggs, Ferguson, Dublin, Walsh. Yes. Um, God, I'm oh, waiting. Oh, let me think. Who else was there? Not oh, good for you already. How many's left? Um, that's you've still got at least 15 left. How big was the squad? 15. <laughs> the Beckham There's... scores, but Neville. Yeah. Um, gig. Uh, gigs. Um. Okay, okay, okay. I'm 
going to hate myself for missing out on. There's there's 32 possible answers. Oh. 32? Mm-hmm. 31, sorry. Casper? Uh, yes, yep. Uh, McGuinness? Uh, uh, no. Uh, oh. Oh. Simon Davies? Uh, no. No. Oh, I missed. I'm sorry, Oh, I Got five seconds. Oh, man. <laughs> Two. Oh, dude, you gotta give in. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, that's 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 a, that's a respectable try. I miss Konchelskis. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Andre. Hey, the two wingers is Giggs and Sharp. We got Andre. Hey, hey. All right. Well, according to my calculations, you got 21. Go on, give me the ones I missed then. Uh, Gillespie. Key. Right, yeah. Craig Lawton. Lee yeah. Martin. Colin McKee. Ah, those were still there, uh, yeah. So some of these now had very few appearances that season, but uh, John O'Kane, Mike yeah. Phelan, uh, Lee Sharp. Mike Phelan, I can't believe he was my roomie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I forgot, I totally forgot Dion Dublin. I did well remember Dion, but he's a mate, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, top of the league, the, this is going to rankle a bit, but top of the table is a Man City legend. Richard Dunn got 24 answers in his wow. quiz. So, is yeah. Kanchelskis the one that hurts, Gary? Is that the one? It that, is, yeah. yeah. Well, unless I didn't see Incy. I mean, if Incy would be on the phone to me if, I, if he sees this. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to take part in the Betway 4 to score challenge this weekend, just try to predict the first four goal scorers in the fixtures designated by Betway. Get it right and you could win £50,000. Well, that's all from us, folks. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Dream Team Coach TV, sponsored by Betway. And big thanks to Gary Pallister, who has also helped us preview the Liverpool-Man United match in a bonus video on our channel. So check that out right after you watch this. Uh, Good luck with your Dream Teams, and we will see you again soon.